Welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Cody and I will be your host for the next hour. Um, on this new show, this is only the second episode of this show, we have been, if you missed the last episode, we have been kind of um, illustrating text, illustrating from text. Um, so we are, the, hence the name of the show, Illustrating Stories. Um, so basically, if you missed last episode, we take uh, a, like a little bit of a story couplet uh, written by my husband and I actually kind of like go through the process with you guys on kind of like the thought process behind illustrating text and kind of uh, just like visualizing how to like go about doing something like that if you're interested in illustrating children's books. Um, hey everyone, welcome. Uh, I hope you all are having a great week so far. Um, and it's, it's great to have you guys here. It's like raining super hard here. So it's like feeling really cozy here. And we're actually going to be drawing a very cozy little illustration today. So, um, today's, uh, theme is actually going to be tea time. Um, and all of the episodes that I have planned for you guys are actually um, going to be characters that I've previously drawn. So I'm pulling my old artwork out of the archives and I am reusing it to kind of like uh, give it new life and um, kind of just like try to um, kind of almost recycle my old artwork into a new project this way. Um, so, hey, Umicorn, I wanted to say hi to you guys. Hey, Oliver, Joshua, good to see you guys. Hey, Wade, Wade is our wonderful moderator today. Thank you so much for joining everyone. Um, all right, so we can go ahead and hop on over to Photoshop. We're working in Photoshop for these. Um, I might actually uh, change it up one time and work in Fresco. I don't know yet, but so far I've been working in Photoshop. <laughs> When you getting wild today, yes, our golden retriever puppy is running around in the background, so you might hear some squeaks. She's like, she wanted to go outside because it's raining, so um, she was like getting really antsy right before the stream, so she's like galloping around the living room right now. <laughs> um, hey everyone, welcome. Okay, <laughs> recycling artwork, yes, it's always a good idea. They were actually just talking about that on Office Hours like a couple weeks ago, and I thought that that was a really cool idea, just kind of like never getting rid of old artwork, always keeping it and just keeping it in the, you know, like on the back burner and keeping it in mind if you ever feel like you have a project that comes up that might, you know, have use for it. Um, so the artwork uh, that I'm referring to here that we are going to be um working with so this is the old illustration i just took a screenshot of it from my instagram account um but this is a like just a little illustration that i did i don't know like two or three years ago um but it's still one of my favorites that i really love in my portfolio um and so we're going to kind of be recreating this um but along with the um going along the lines of the text so like in like, let's just pretend like this illustration might be like earlier in our book that we're illustrating. And this is the character that we've already previously been introduced to. Um, and this is the page that we are writing for. So by breaking down this, uh, this like text couplet sentence, little rhyming sentence here, um, this is basically like what I would do if I were to kind of just like start trying to visualize, um, like, okay, I look at the text, okay, and then I just try to just, like try to start like visualizing it in my head, like how is this going to work? Um, but it's easy to be able to just kind of like break it down into parts, like to make sure that you like are for sure getting in all of the necessary information into the illustration. Um, what's cool about illustrating kids books too, though, is that sometimes the illustration informs the text, but also sometimes the text informs the illustration. So like you can add in information in the illustration that isn't necessarily in the text and vice versa. Um, so let's look at our text first of all, before I go off onto a tangent here. <laughs> so basically using it as reference. Yeah, so yeah. Um, so we will be drawing, I'm kind of going to like, draw this scene but with our text um so our text is because <laughs> i haven't read it yet our text is whether it's morning or evening or latest can be it's always a good time to brew up some tea so in this case 
So we mentioned morning or evening or late as can be. So you could do this illustration at any point in the day. Sometimes, you know, your text might um, specify a time of day. Like, let's say it's like, oh, they mentioned a sunset. You, you'd probably want to do your illustration as a sunset because that would make sense. The text is informing the illustration in that sense. But because this text gives us the option, um, we get to choose. Um, and then it says it's always, always a good time to brew up some tea. So we could, if we wanted to, um, brew up, we could like have a scene with our bear friend, um, actually like actively brewing tea. Like maybe he's got a little teapot with him. Um, but clearly, obviously something that we have to have in the scene is a cup of tea, whether he's drinking tea or he's got a tea set with him or anything like that. So just like kind of breaking it down and of course, um, good time. So we are kind of visualizing like he's having a good time. He's relaxed. He's just like, you know, maybe like this, like cozying up by the fire. It's raining. He's brewing up some tea. He's getting cozy, you know? It's not like a spooky scene, you know? So <laughs> of course the text is informing the illustration. <laughs> CJ said, that's a dang good line. Who wrote that? <laughs> For those of you that don't know, CJ is my husband. He's the one that wrote that. <laughs> um, okay, so I actually, because last, last episode, I actually kind of ran out of time and we didn't have time to finish the illustration last time, I kind of got a little bit of a head start this time around. So I went ahead actually, mostly, I just actually ended up tracing my old artwork, which I wanna say that like, don't be, don't be afraid to trace your own work. Like, especially if you want to reuse a certain asset or something, I say this quite a lot. Like, I know it can feel like you're kind of like cheating, but it's not. I mean, you're literally just saving time. You already drew it. You're not cheating. You're you you're just reusing an asset that you already re, re, uh, created before. So I kind of just like drew this little armchair. So like if you think about it, I put it on the left side of the um the little wood stove. So in a sense, like the chair in this scene is kind of I'm almost just like extending the scene over here. So like he moved over to the left side of his little his little wood stove here, and now he's um. Now he's he's got his little tea. Um, but I something that I didn't add yet. First of all, let me move this guy out of the way. Make it a little bit smaller. I am going to add a few things that we had in this scene that I kind of want to bring over to the new scene are the like is like the rug on the floor and also some of his pages that he's been illustrating. Um just to kind of like carry the story over from illustration to illustration. Um, so it kind of feels like the same scene. So like, for, for instance, like if this scene, if this first colored scene here was in the, the beginning of the book, uh, and then we switched over to this scene, we have to have that um, congruency between the two illustrations to make sure that we're still um, keeping the same story. So, we have to make sure that we're bringing over all of those same assets. So let's draw in this little red rug. And I'm actually, when I draw in this rug, um, something that I like to do a lot in my own illustrations is using forced flat perspective. That's what I like to call it anyway. Um, so I'm actually not adding any kind of perspective to this rug. If you look like at this older illustration. It's actually just basically a perfect rectangle here without having perspective. Like if this was in perspective, it would be more like this and it would be more like a trapezoid shape. But instead, just to give it a little bit of kind of forced perspective character, um, sometimes I like to draw things completely flat. Um, and that's kind of also something that's really nice about doing that is especially like in an illustration like this, where we kind of want some more floor space, is it kind of like lowered, lowered the, I guess almost widened the field of view. So it allows 
like for more visual of the illustrations on the ground. Um, so I am just going to go ahead and draw in this little rug here. And we'll also, like I said, redraw his little um, his little papers that he has on the ground, his little crayon drawings. Something else that we should bring over too are these herbs on the wall. So we want to make sure, like I said, going back to what I just mentioned before. So like we wouldn't want to draw those things or like any pictures that are on the walls or something like that in one illustration and not do it in another. Um, just because it kind of holds that almost um, believability to your story, because if it's in one illustration, it doesn't make sense that it would suddenly be left out in the next. And then we also, I'm gonna just hold down shift really quick here. And I'm actually gonna do this on a separate layer just so it's easier to erase. And I'm going to hold down shift just so I can add in this baseboard here. And I'm just gonna erase the parts that I don't want. Makes it really easy when you put it on a separate layer like that. And we're just gonna throw on some little wood grain shapes. I typically just kind of like try to do some like straight-ish, but also kind of squiggly lines for my um, for my wood grain. I kind of try to keep it a little bit um, caricaturized, I guess you could say. Hi, Jeffrey. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Uh, the bear is so cute. Thank you so much. Pre appreciate it. Hey, Katarina. Welcome. Um, okay. So let's see here. So we have our little mug of tea here. I also, I think I kind of want to fill this space with just like, since like this space is kind of empty, I was thinking about just drawing in like a little steam bubble here. just to fill that up a little bit. Okay. So let's go ahead and add in, I'm going to go ahead and just, once again, I'm gonna throw on, I'm gonna trace these guys really quick just so we can kind of throw it into the illustration. There we go. Oh, something else that I wanted to do as well is that I wanted to kind of frame this. So let's see. So I might just grab actually a, um, let's see, I'm going to grab a natural, uh, a watercolor brush by Kyle Webster. It's called Natural Edge Painter. And I am just going to come in behind everything with a pretty light color. I'll probably have to redo this in the uh, in the future, but um, just because we're probably going to scale up our drawing a little bit. But just for the sake of um, the demonstration. I kind of want to just add in a little bit of a frame here. So this is kind of like the bounds that the background would have um, on the page of the book. And I'll probably actually scale this down just a little bit to kind of um, scooch everything in and make it feel a little bit more cozy.
So I'm actually going to just bring this over. So this is basically the bounds of our little illustration here. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to go ahead and erase the rest of this outside of the illustration because we actually won't need it. There we go. And I think I'll move in these herbs just a little bit, just so they're not like right on the edge like this. Or I could kind of like push them out a little bit more. So they were kind of like overhanging, but I think I might just bring them in. And of course we have this big empty space right here. So we got to fill that with something. Um, maybe I'll add like a picture, a couple of pictures or something like that. I don't know. What, what do you guys think we should put on the wall right here? Maybe, maybe, um, I don't know, like a big, a big picture of a, of a teapot or something. <laughs> um, okay. Let's deselect that. Um, and then we also wanted to, oh, first of all, I just caught something. Let's go back to our pencil brush and I am going to extend our baseboard <laughs> Clever says a beehive painting on the wall or a big honey pot. That would be super cute. A little like in a in a frame here. Like we could do like a little gallery wall. Like maybe there's like a little frame and then maybe like a smaller frame that's got like a little bee or and maybe A picture of a house with a car and a dog. Oh, that's very intricate. Oh my goodness. I might do, let's do like, I do love the idea of like having just like some cute little pictures because on the walls uh, in your character's houses, because it kind of like, it kind of tells a story in and of itself. It kind of shows like a little bit of, of, backstory to your character without actually saying anything and that's kind of like that's kind of what i was referring to earlier when i said that the illustration can inform the text like we have very simple text here um for this illustration but what's nice is that you can add in details that isn't necessary that's not that's not necessarily in the text you know um like for instance i can give him a little polka dotted mug the text doesn't say that he has a polka dotted mug, but you can see that with your eyes by looking at the illustration. Um, so like you can infer that the text is saying like, it's kind of like reading between the lines. You can like, it's saying it without actually saying it. We could also do like, a little family portrait. <laughs> Hi, Tonk, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Okay, um, I did want to draw in his little um, drawings. 
Um, so let's do that before I forget. So we have this little, <laughs> this little bear drawing here. This one kind of is coming actually in the middle here. Oh, you know what? I actually extended the rug a little bit farther than I would like out. So I am actually going to, in this original illustration, it actually only extends out from the stove just a tiny bit. So I'm actually going to bring this, this line in. And this is what's, what's great about having the reference up because you can Im like immediately see the differences. And that actually means that I could, if I wanted to, which I think I do, move everything in just a tad. And it kind of like helps make everything a little bit cozier. So I'm gonna scooch all of this in closer to the stove. Probably about there. And then with our background, I can just go ahead and scooch that in as well. Okay. Okay. Now we can go back in and do draw our little drawings here. So this one is kind of like extends out like this. And then it's got this other one here. Oh, you know what might be cute is if we put one of his own little illustrations on the wall, like, like it's clearly drawn in crayon or something. <laughs> like that one's framed. That one, that one's going on the fridge. Okay. So we have this little hill with the little trees. Oh, we're drawing upside down today. <laughs> That's always fun. And we have our little bear. There we go. <laughs> oh, that was very loud thunder. I don't know if you guys heard that. <laughs> Okay, so let's throw in really quick. Let's see how much time we got. Okay, cool. We have time, some time. We have some time to do these things. So I just want to lower the opacity here and I'm going to um, flush out this little sketch a little bit better here since I just kind of like threw it on. Let's do a little beehive. I could draw these um, with like holding shift and then that would um, prevent me from making wonky lines. But in this instance, I think that I'm actually going to just go ahead and let whatever lines that I draw be those lines because um, I think I'm feeling like 
I like the idea of the frames being a little off kilter. Might make this a little bit smaller. I'm just going to try to give a little bit of breathing room along the edges as well. Wade said I didn't hear it, but we've had a, had a ton of storms lately. Oh, yeah. I wonder if you're... I don't know what direction the storm is going right now, but I wonder if you're going to get this storm, too. Or maybe I'm getting your storm. Ooh, it is pouring. Hopefully our power doesn't go out. Um, I believe we have... We have our streaming computer on a on a power supply, so hopefully the stream doesn't give out. But my computer would go out though, so I guess that doesn't really help. <laughs> the stream will stay up, but I won't be here. <laughs> there we go. There's our little buds, our little friends. make this one a little bit smaller i love these like um these gallery walls i think that's so interesting um but it takes so much planning to do a gallery wall that looks really good you know um but i think gallery walls are really pretty like having like different sized frames and it's kind of like eclectic but in a sense it all goes together still but you have to really like find the right prints that go together to make a nice gallery wall. Okay, here's our little bee friend. And you know what? I think I might just stick with the three. Um, just because I think we're, if we do four, we're kind of like, um, it's kind of like getting a little cramped and also having uh, odd numbers of things is um, like if you're going to do more than two, having an odd number is kind of best because it looks a little bit less um, contrived. It looks a little bit more organic. So I think I might just stick with the three and I might kind of space them out a little bit differently. Okay, I'll just make them a little bit smaller, something like that. Okay, so I think we have our sketch done. Um, that's looking pretty cool. I like that. Um, I think just one little change here. I think I might use the distort transform on this. Now that we're a little bit closer to the stove, I think I might make this, just scooch this in just a little bit so we have a little bit more breathing room right there. Just kind of center it on this space here. And I think we're pretty good right there. Okay, so from here, let's save our work, shall we? Um, so we have our scene. Um, so now you, of course, would know ahead of time, but <laughs> if you're doing, you know, a picture book that's, you know, a lot of full illustrations, most likely you're going to be doing it in color. However, if you're doing more of like an illustrated chapter book, like for instance, um, Series of, of Unfortunate Events is like a young reader chapter book that has illustrations in it. Most of the time, those are printed in black and white 
unless it's like some kind of special edition of the book or something. Um, so for me, I actually still like doing my illustrations in color. Um, and then, but also making sure that I check my values along the way, which I do regardless. Um, but that way you can have a colored version and also a black and white version of your illustration for, you know, whatever different needs you might have for it. Um, but it also depends on the, the coloring style that you're going for. Like for instance, in the, uh, the book that my husband and I are writing, I am going for a pencil sketch look. So all of my illustrations are going to be black and white uh, because it's a totally different coloring style than I normally do. But if you are an artist that does um, like a lot of color like I do um, and you kind of want to have versatility for your illustrations, um, like let's say maybe you want, you know, the black and white version for inside the book, but you want a colored version for, you know, like marketing material or something, um, then that way you don't have to go back and color it later that then you can have both. Um, so you kind of have to just like plan ahead of time and figure out what your needs are for each illustration. Um, but since we did a black and white one last time, I actually here I can open up. I didn't finish it. Um, but I, for those of you, whoops, for those of you that missed the last episode, um, we were actually doing. Let's see, where is it? Oh, here it is. We were actually doing um, just like a watercolor and inking illustration here. It was like a kite kite scene. Um, but I think I might do something a little bit different or maybe, I don't know, maybe not. But I might use more of pastel textures, but I might just do it in black and white. Or we could do it in color. I'll leave it up to you guys. Do you, do you guys want me to do like inking in black and white or just like pastels in black and white? Or do you want me to just do regular color? We have half an hour. <laughs> totally not going to finish it today, but, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get started on it. <laughs> black and white inking says CJ. I also have just for the sake of, uh, for funsies, um, here. Let's actually, uh, let's condense all these down. Let's pull in this guy. Let's put this on a separate layer because I accidentally drew it on the same layer as our reference. And then let's delete this. Delete, deselect. And then let's move this guy and we're going to put these two guys into a group and we're going to move this guy over. Nope, not that one. This one. I have just like this little, um, I don't have a, a, um, a mock-up for the inside of a book, but maybe I should, maybe I should find one. But, um, this is just for fun, just to like kind of see what it might look like in the inside of a book layout. Um, so this is kind of like why I personally really like to put like a, um, an edge background to my illustrations. Um, you could do a full bleed, but I think a lot of the time I feel like in, in illustrated chapter books, I see, um, you know, books having like this kind of like rounded rectangle shape around them, um, rather than having the full page be illustrated. Um, but I, that's probably personal preference to the author or the publisher. I don't really know, but, um, I just personally like the look of it. It kind of like almost looks like a little portal into the, into the world of the character. <clears throat> the kite scene is cool. Thank you. Um, warm inks. Oh, I could, I could do warm inks. I have a tendency to, to do like colored ink instead of black and white. Although of course it, when it was printed, it would be in black and white, but, um, as long as your values, as long as your values are solid, it doesn't really matter what color you work in because like, so like if you, if you prefer to work in an ink, that's like blue or something, that's totally fine. As long as it's, uh, you know, you have your values correct, then, you know, you'll know what it looks like when it's printed. But, um, I will go ahead and, um, do ink because it looks like that's what everyone is preferring. So I am going to go ahead and first of all, I am going to scale up my illustration. I'm going to get rid of this guy here. 
I'm going to scale up my illustration. I'm not worried about scaling right now because um, I'm not rather I'm not worried about losing resolution scaling up right now because um, it's just the it's just the sketch. Um, so I would rather be able to scale up from the sketch and color over top of that. That's typically how I work. So I'm going to scale up just to fit this, this canvas here. And let's go ahead and that was why I was saying earlier, I'll probably need to redo the watercolor background just because I knew I was going to be scaling it up. But that's just kind of, it's almost like the sketch background and we'll redo it later. Um, okay, so let's grab an inking brush. <clears throat> I kind of want to do, I kind of want to do something crazy and possibly have like the, the, um, stove be like solid black ink, but I don't know if that would detract from the character too much, but, um, I don't know. Let's try it out. Um, I could also just use the squash brush as my ink, my inking brush. I kind of like the texture of it. That's another thing too, is that if you're working in black and white, like and you want to do like an inking look, you don't necessarily have to use like an actual ink brush. You can use whatever brushes you want. Um, okay. So let's scroll in here and see what we're working with. Have any of you guys, or do any of you guys use real life inks for anything? I um I actually have Windsor and Newton um uh India inks. I don't use them very often, although I do have um some work in them. I've done uh like just like kind of uh wash fountain pen work. Um, that I have some illustrations on my Instagram just from like a couple of years ago, I guess. But it was very different. Like I'm so not used to, <laughs> well, for one, just doing traditional in general. I'm so not used to not having an undo button. But um, I do, I do really like how it turned out, especially it being just like my first like experiences with working with a fountain pen. Um, or drawing with a fountain pen, especially I, well, I can't, I can't write with fountain pen either, but <laughs> it's very difficult. Uh, Wade says I use alcohol inks, Copics, um, sometimes, but they're not light fast. Oh yeah, I actually don't own any Copic markers. I've never used um, like the alcohol markers before, but I really like seeing artists on Instagram that use Copic markers. I enjoy uh, seeing their work. It's really interesting the how different the process is between different types of mediums. Like for instance, uh, like like with like watercolors or Copics, like you have to work light to dark because you're layering, layering ink on top of ink. So it's just going to get dark. It's, it's almost like working, working with a multiply layer constantly all the time. That's the, that's the digital artist's perspective. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably go over this with, um, maybe like a, I don't know, like maybe like a light chalk color, like to add in the, the detail lines. I'm, I'm feeling like, I don't know exactly. I'm kind of just making this up as I go along here. This is new territory for me. Uh, Kriazis, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining.
I also, something that I like about this gouache brush specifically, it's called Gouache Perfecto, it's by Kyle as well, um, is that it doesn't have full 100% opacity. So as you can see, you can kind of like see where um, it's not perfectly solid, the color, like you can actually see the background color showing through. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that look. Um, it kind of adds like a traditional element to it and it kind of almost looks a little bit more like inks. Yeah, so we're just kind of filling this in. Like I said, I think I might go back and edit this a little bit, but I kind of like how that's looking so far. And then like I can add in, let's make our brush a little bit bigger and I'll add in. These little rungs for the for the uh, door. Like that. And then let's go on a separate layer. I think I'll add in um, for the line work. I think I might actually change to an ink brush. Da do do run. <laughs> That's what this brush is called. This is the ink brush that I really like from Kyle. This is the one that I used um, for the the kite illustration that I was just showing. Has like kind of a really nice like almost micron pen look to it. It's kind of almost adds um, like paper texture. I kind of want to add the outside edge to be a little bit darker. And then also um, what I like to do too, um, when I'm doing these inking illustrations is that I'll come back with this natural edge painter brush, the same brush that I used for the background. And I'll kind of um, just use it to add in like different values. Um, so for instance, I'll come in here and I can make the picture. I can kind of give it a little bit of dimension this way. Actually, since our light source is below, the shadow would actually be about here. It'd get covered a little bit. Do it like that. And then let's also add in our little herbs here. Might just add in some simple shapes and then maybe come back and do a little bit of line work for them. So like if we lower this opacity a little bit, or all the way rather, you can kind of see what it looks like without the sketch. 
So let's pull up the sketch just a little bit so we can see it. And then I'm going to grab um, Da Do Do Run again. Oh, actually, no, it's Da Do Run Run, not Da Do Do Run. Da Do Run Run. Two runs. Okay. So then we can grab black. And we will just add in some of these lines here. Need left abysmal. <laughs> uh. Okay. Um, I want to kind of make this a little bit darker. I just saw lightning out of the corner of my eye. Okay. Hey, Annika, how are you doing? Uh, Annika says, how has your process changed in terms of shape language and how you approach illustrations from when you first made this? Honestly, not much. I actually, this is one of the illustrations that I use um, to reference shapes. When I'm working, um, even now, uh, I don't remember what year I did this. I think it was probably like 2018 or 19. So it's been a while, but it's one of those illustrations. Like I really personally really love how the picture turned out in this one. And also the wood stove. I reference this wood stove quite a lot when I do work, um, and also just interiors in general. I don't draw a lot of interiors um, because I struggle with like man-made, drawing man-made structures. So I use this as a reference for those things. Um, for instance, when I go to draw interiors, a lot of the time I use this as a reference because I have a tendency to want to, I, I try to keep my furniture and stuff pretty flat. Um, as you can see, like this, wood stove is very flat against the wall. And I did that purposefully because uh, doing like 3D, um, like man-made shapes are very difficult for me. Um, so I kind of just like made it work. Um, so yeah, I actually use this. Um, it's, it's part of the reason why I brought it back because it's one of my favorites. Um, so uh, yeah, I actually really like, also another thing that I use to reference in this illustration is how I drew the fire. The shape of the fire is like rounded triangles. I don't know about you guys, but man, I cannot ever settle on how I want to draw a fire. <laughs> it is like one of those like constant struggles that I have that like sometimes it turns out the way I want it to and sometimes it doesn't. So it's basically, <laughs> I kind of drew it as like a little, it's almost like a little flower shape kind of. Like if you pull it out like this, like this could totally be like a little flower. Um, but yeah, so I actually use this illustration for reference a lot of the time. Um, okay, let's pull up our sketch again here. I was actually just thinking about working on the fire. So because the fire is going to be the brightest thing in the space, I'm um, going to kind of use it as negative space because we want it to be bright. Um, so I'm going to, let's go back to our natural edge painter. 
And I'm going to actually paint the space around the fire rather than actually painting the fire. And because this is digital artwork, of course, I can just go back and um, clean it up. So I'm not going to be super um, precious with it. But I'm just going to kind of like fill in these. Basically going to give it like a little bit of a vignette here to kind of indicate that the fire is bright. So let's go back and let's go to clear mode. And let's just go ahead and like clean up this shape here. Of course, this is, if this was traditional work, I wouldn't be able to come back and erase this. But if I was actually working with watercolors and inks, I would be a lot more precious with the shape that I was drawing initially. And also even with this background color to emphasize that the flame is bright, I might even, yeah, I might even get rid of the background color that's here as well. So the flame is brighter than the background color. So we have that white showing through there. Okay, so we only we have less than 10 minutes left. I think I want to go in with Conte Crayon and I think I'm going to grab one of these gray colors. I realized that I'm working with like different tones of grays. I didn't mean to do that, but <laughs> that's where we're at. Um, so I am going to just reduce down the ink layer and I'm basically just like going to go over my ink like I would in like traditionally, but I'm going to go over it like with a crayon to add in these details. Um, so, of course, if we don't like the color, we can always go back and fix that. But, Adding in just all of these little details that kind of help bring some character to the stove here. Hey, Alessandra, how are you doing? Good to see you. <coughs> There we go. So now let's pull that layer back up. Now we have some details on that stove there. I think that really that really enhances it a lot. I'm going to I'm going to actually grab the background color and use that as my um as my detail color. So then it just blends right into the background there. 
And let's turn off our sketch just so we can see what it looks like. There we go. There, now we're working in full black and white rather than off colors. Okay, save your work. And we are just about done with the time not the illustration but we did a decent amount i mean i'm glad we got the sketch done we started the coloring process and um you know we got through our little couplet for the day which was whether it's morning or evening or late as can be it's always a good time to brew up some tea so um we were able to get through you know a lot of the the sketch the thought process and i hope this guy's helped that this helped you guys out um, knowing, you know, like maybe my thought process behind, uh, working through, uh, text to illustration. And, um, I will be back in two weeks to do the next episode. I believe the next episode is going to be, um, some, uh, salmon fishing, uh, like little bears, salmon fishing. So it's about that season as well. Um, so thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time. Hope you all have a great evening. Bye.